Turn your Bible to the book of Revelation, chapter 5. Revelation, chapter 5. And for a long, long time in my years of being in ministry and even uh, in my years of being saved, I've been saved for quite a few years now, since I was 26 years old, and I'm 42, going to be 43 here in a little over a month. And on that entire time, uh, I would say probably the most fascinating book in the entire Bible, um, and I would say most people would say this, would be the book of Revelation. And, uh, you know, just when you think you get it figured out, you think, okay, that's, that's what's going to happen. Those are the events of the time of Jacob's trouble, improperly called the Great Tribulation, but side issue. <laughs> but just when you think you get it figured out, somebody comes out with a question, they say, um, but I don't understand the timing of how these events happen here because in this chapter here it says, you know, the sun is darkened, but over here it says the sun is darkened. Is it two times or is this the same event? You look and you go, well, okay, yeah, and you, and you kind of go back and forth and things and, and you look and you say, well, okay, I don't understand what's going on with these people here and why is this seeming to contradict that over there and I don't, I don't get that and, and you know, there's got to be an explanation for this. I mean, there's this and there's that. And how does this whole thing work out? And, you know, I've talked with brethren that know the Bible extremely well. And you try to say, well, you know, this, this, these are the events and whatever else. And then you start to look at other things and you say, but wait, how does this work? <laughs> and the book of Revelation, I would say, is one of the most fought over books out there in terms of its interpretation. Why is that? Revelation chapter 5, verse 1. And I saw on the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. Hmm. Then uh, why do people think that they can understand the book of Revelation? I think that that's what the context is here. I think it's about talking about the book of Revelation. But the context is saying here, this is a future event. This hasn't happened yet. What John saw there back in the first century, he's transported forward in time. What he saw has not happened yet. I believe that this is after the catching up of the body of Christ. And John is seeing something here. He's seeing that there's a book that tells what's going to happen in the future. And John writes down what this book, the details of this book say. And nobody's found worthy to open the book. Then why do we think that we can understand the book of Revelation? You see, I believe as a dispensational Christian, I believe that the book of Revelation is sealed. That's why there's so many contradicting accounts of things and, and you know, whatever, whatever. And you have these different cultists. I remember there was some prophecy club thing, some guy, um, some charismatic cuckoo bird, and he said about the book of Revelation has been unsealed. Well, that's kind of blasphemous because you see when you read the Bible, Jesus Christ, we're going to see this here in the next few verses, Jesus Christ is the only one that can unseal the book. David Koresh, down there with the Branch Davidians, he came out and he said that he is the Lamb of God and that it is given to him to loose the seals. A little bit blasphemy there. That's why I think, you know, that and a few other reasons is why I think, you know, God allowed that guy to get, you know, murdered down there in uh, his cult along with him. A lot of them. But let's keep reading here. Verse 5. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, um, stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. 
And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain, it has to be talking about Jesus Christ, and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. So you have these 24 elders, they're clearly New Testament Christians. I believe that there are 12 natural boundaries back in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, it talks about that the, the boundaries of the nations and things, that they're basically separated according to the number of the children of Israel. So there's 12 boundaries. So you have two saved Christians from each of those 12 boundaries. There you get your 24 elders, right? That's the only theory that makes sense. It's not the 12 apostles and 12 patriarchs of the, of the Jews, because then they'd all be Jews. So how could you get them out of every um, kindred, tongue, people, and nation? I mean, it just makes common sense. A lot of people struggle over that thing, and I did for years too, and then the Lord just opened my understanding and said, it's plainly saying it right there. All right, It's not the events of the book of Revelation that are still sealed. This is just a common sense thing here. The 24 elders are two from each of the 12 uh, boundaries. Verse 10, And hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands, in other words, less than 200 million, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth, and such as are in the sea and all that are in them, heard I saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. You say, well, where is the body of Christ at? Well, the hundred, or the, excuse me, the ten thousand times ten thousand, there are the angels, many angels. In the resurrection we are as the angels of God. Again, another big study. Uh, the sons of God in the Old Testament are always a reference to angels. In the New Testament, now are we the sons of God? Hmm, interesting. But here's the whole point. The book of Revelation that we're in right here is not fully opened until Jesus Christ opens it. So it's amazing to me how many people down here, how many Christians think they can understand the whole book of Revelation and just spell it all out. That's why people were asking me for years, could you do an expository study on the book of Revelation? And I just said, no, no, I'm not going to do that. No, I'm not going to do that. And finally, the Lord gave me the idea. Well, how about for instruction and righteousness? And there's some good lessons that you can learn throughout the book of Revelation. But to give a play-by-play -play of what exactly is going to happen in the time of Jacob's trouble? Nope. It's not going to happen. Why? Because I'm not worthy. I'm just a man. I'm not worthy to be able to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. And you're not either. You say, but my pastor, your pastor's not worthy. Well, my professor at the Bible, he's not worthy. Well, my grandmother, she really, she's not worthy. Well, my dad was a Baptist, he's not worthy. No man is worthy, except for one, the Lamb of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me show you another verse that ties into this whole thing. Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24, begin in verse 36. And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. But they were terrified and afraid and supposed that they had seen a spirit. And he said unto them, why are ye troubled, and why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see. For a spirit hath not flesh and bones, as ye see me have. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they, and while they yet believed not for joy, and wondered, he said unto them, Have ye here any meat? And they gave him a piece of a broiled fish and of an honeycomb. And he took it, and did eat before them. And he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. All these heretics out there, non-dispensational heretics, they'll say, well, you, you know, they were saved in the Old Testament same way that they're saved in the New Testament. They are showing complete ignorance of scriptures. 
Jesus is there and he's telling them the death that he's going to die and then he's going to be buried and he's going to come up in three days and they're going, huh? I don't get it. <laughs> you know? And after he comes up from the dead, you can read earlier on here in the chapter, you know, and he's walking with them and they're saying, we thought that Jesus was the one that's supposed to come, you know, and he's standing there walking with them. They still didn't believe, you know? And even after he's there talking with them here, it says, um, verse 41, And while they yet believed not for joy and wondered, he said unto them, Have ye here any meat? They still didn't believe. They still are having trouble with unbelief. You see? So what's the Lord do about it? Verse 45, Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the Scriptures. Hmm. And said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. He opened their understanding of the Scriptures. Mm -hmm. Kind of like you could say he unsealed the book. You see... The unsealing of the book of Revelation has not happened yet. It won't happen until the body of Christ is up there. You see, because the body of Christ is not going to be there in the time of Jacob's trouble. It's not for them. And what's the first seal that's opened, by the way, I might add? The Antichrist, the rider on the white horse. So the body of Christ cannot be here to see the Antichrist. Not possible. Not at all possible. It would contradict Scripture. The body of Christ is there in heaven. And then the Lord says, now I'm going to open up. And now people are going to understand about the book of Revelation. But not before then. So you can you can go through the book of Revelation. I mean, there's obviously, you know, a third of all the trees are burned up. Okay, well, that's not too hard to figure out. You can look at that thing. But how that fits into the whole time of Jacob's trouble and how everything and what about the wars and, the, you know, the uh, Gog and Magog and, and what about this and what about that and when's the mark going to show up and when's, how's, what's it exactly going to be and, you know, how's it going to work and is there that... You need to drop your pride and say, I don't know. It hasn't been opened yet. And don't tell me that you can just look at the world and say, oh, yeah, you know, it's pretty much just going to be, you know, I see some of these old movies where they talk about, you know, the, the after the rapture type of thing, and it's the same world then as it is right now. Uh, that's not going to happen. It's going to be a totally different world. I mean, the world that we're living in right now is a different world than it was 10 years ago. Uh, what's it going to be like when the body of Christ leaves? And now there's no more restraint there. He who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way, and then shall that wicked be revealed. He who now letteth, Holy Spirit, will let until he be taken out of the way, the body of Christ. Then that wicked will appear, the Antichrist. That's what's going on there. So, uh, yeah, study the book of Revelation. Study the whole Bible. But if you think that you can just go through and exposit the whole thing, and this is exactly what's going to happen, you're a fool. No man is found worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. Nobody. Jesus Christ has to open your understanding. And he isn't going to open the book and unloose the seals until the body of Christ is gone, until we're up there in heaven. Then he starts to open the book. Then things make sense. And there was one point in the book of Revelation, we're not going to go there, but you know, John actually hears the seven thunders uttering something and he begins to write and voice from heaven says, seal up those things and write them not. So, not all of the events of the time of Jacob's trouble, they're not all written in the book. There's a bunch of things that are going to happen there that we can't possibly understand. And it's going to be a different world. Totally different world. So, just thought I'd make that video. Just preach this little mini sermon here because I've seen a lot of people and they get all prideful and they think to themselves we can just understand you know i have this expository study on the book of revelation and this, these are the events how they will happen and you look into it and you go well that 
contradicts over here and this doesn't work and that's not what's going to happen. <laughs> the whole book, the whole Bible, you can read it, you can study it, but it's not all written to you as a Christian. So don't get too proud, okay? Oh, and I look forward to the time when we get to go to be with the Lord Jesus Christ in heaven and He gets the glory. He is the one that opens the Scriptures. And no man's found worthy except for Him. It's going to be a good time and I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully you are too. Thanks for watching.